welcome to this particular lecture on antibiotic sensitivity assay or microbial bioassay of antibiotic. In this particular lecture, we'll be discussing the different aspects of antibiotic bioassay on microbes. Antibiotic, this term was coined by Selman A. Waxman in the year 1942, meaning that an organism preventing the growth of another organism through some secondary metabolite. Though it was much earlier, Willemann, who actually proved the phenomenon of antibiosis, meaning life against life. Sir, don't you think that the history of antibiotic is much more earlier? Yeah, absolutely right. The history of antibiotic can go up to 1877, when it was Robert Koch and Louis Pasteur, who did a unique experiment where they showed the antagonistic effect between bacillus and bacillus anthracis. As seen here in the Petri plate, the colonies of bacillus anthracis was prevented by these green colonies of bacillus. And thereby, this antibiosis was proved in 1877. And almost at the same time, it was in 1880, Paul Arlish, who actually showed that some chemotherapeutic agent can be used in the preventing the growth of the different pathogenic microbes. And it was the army man, Tibero, in the year 1895, who showed that certain green mold in the form of penicillium, having this mycelia and this conidia, preventing the growth of bacterial organism. But this observation got actually matured with the discovery of Alexander Fleming, who accidentally discovered penicillin from penicillium when it was in this particular petri plate he observed that the colonies of the penicillium notatum prevented the growth of bacteria and thereby the discovery of penicillin started in the year 1928. Sir, so this one is the original plate? Yeah, absolutely. This is the original plate from where this observation of Fleming led to the discovery of penicillin. And it was Paul Dumac who actually proved that there may be some sulfur compounds which can be used in the prevention of different bacteria and they were called commonly the sulfonamides and this compound discovered by Domac is in the year 1932 is called the prontosil. Sir, can you tell us about the uses of all those antibiotics? Yeah, antibiotic as I already told you is mostly used as a compound which will prevent the growth of different bacteria. So it is used as an antibacterial Sometimes antibiotic can also be used in the form of antiprotozoal drug. Like the metronidazole, it is a chemical compound which is actually preventing the growth of protozoa by inhibiting the different action like the electron transport chain, like it will be forming some adduct with the different enzymes of the protozoa or at the same time it will lead to the non-protein thiol depletion in the protozoa and thereby it will prevent the growth of protozoa or any other parasitic protozoa. Some of the antibiotics can also inhibit the purine biosynthesis or DNA biosynthesis and it includes the sulfa methoxazole, dapsone, trimethoprim, which will act ultimately block the dihydrofolic acid or tetrahydrofolic acid biosynthesis and thereby the purine biosynthesis is inhibited. Now Sudeshna, why don't you explain the different parameters of antibiotic bioassay? Thank you. Parameters related to the quantification of enzyme activity. It includes chemotherapeutic index as well as antibiotic assay systems. It includes MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration, as well as MBC, minimum bactericidal concentration or minimum lethal concentration. In case of MIC, minimum inhibitory concentration, it is bacteriostatic, that minimum concentration to block the growth of the pathogen. But in case of MBC or MLC, it is bactericidal, it totally kills the microorganism. It is two to four times higher than that of the MIC. It is found that in case of MIC, if it checks or blocks the growth of microorganism, then 
if the organism is transferred to the fresh medium without antibiotic, then again they will be able to grow till MBC is reached. Then after MBC, the microorganism is totally unable to grow. Perhaps that is the reason why half dose of antibiotic is more dangerous. Absolutely, sir. So, we have to keep the proper dose of antibiotic all time. The assay system for antibiotic bioassay. It includes carbivoid diffusion test. It includes Stokes method of diffusion. It includes agar dilution method as well as it includes e-test, epsilometer test. Carbivoid disc diffusion test. So, wafers or discs containing antibiotics are placed over the agar plate containing one specific microorganism and we can use different types of antibiotics here. Clear zone of inhibition against growth actually tells us about the effectivity and MIC of particular antibiotic against specific organism. Now from this picture we can find gentamicin, ampicillin, chloromphenicol, cefotaxime, oxytetracycline, enrofloxacin, different types of antibiotics are used against one specific microorganism and it was found that the higher zone of inhibition with 5 microgram enrofloxacin and lowest zone of inhibition with respect to oxytetracycline 30 microgram. So, from here we can have the idea that which one is the better or best against that particular microorganism. Here in one plate we can have both control culture as well as we can have taste culture together. On upper as well as lower one third of the agar we can use the control culture and at the middle we can use the test culture. Sir, here we can only observe one specific microorganism with respect to different antibiotic. The beauty of this method is that you can actually have both control as well as test culture in a single plate. <laughs> Here we can find the concentration gradient is given in one particular strip. An antibiotic is allowed to diffuse and it will create an epsilon like structure. So from one plate once again, one plate one microorganism but different concentration of the antibiotic help us to elucidate the MIC minimum inhibitory concentration. <laughs> In case of agar, we can use muller hinton agar and one specific microorganism like penicillin can be given against gram positive one. So from here, we can observe in broth dilution method, different concentration of antibiotic is given and we can calculate the MIC. But in case of MIC, that will permit once again the growth in the fresh medium without antibiotic and help us to calculate or quantify the MBC. So, considering all these different methods, don't you think epsilometer is the best method to have antibiotic bioassay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because in case of epsilometer test, in a strip, all gradient of the concentration right. of antibiotic right. is given Absolutely. with respect to one specific Absolutely. microorganism. And in case of other methods, Stokes method, two organisms with respect to one antibiotic. Right. Antibiotic must be targeted they must be specific to its action. Antibiotic must be bacteriostatic as well. There will be so many routes for the administration of the antibiotic like intravenous, intramuscular or oral. It must have some good absorption capacity and it must be well distributed toward the target infectious site. It must have very high therapeutic index, that means high therapeutic value, low toxicity. It must, must not show any types of allergenic effect as well as it have some other aspects with respect to the health condition. Antibiotic does not interfere the growth of normal microflora as well as the resistance against antibiotic will grow slower and must have some good effect. Sir, can you please tell us about the classification of antibiotic? Yes. 
antibiotics can be classified in different ways. The primary way by which antibiotic can be classified is on the basis of the target on which it acts. It is the cell wall inhibiting antibiotic. And this includes these beta-lactam antibiotics which include the penicillin, cephalosporin, monobactam and carbapenem. Primarily, they are all having this beta-lactam ring and this penicillin will be inhibiting the cell wall biosynthesis or tetrapeptide linkage. Cephalosporin is almost similar to penicillin, only it is resistant to penicillinase enzyme. Monobactam is a much better one because monobactam inhibits the mucopeptide and it binds to the penicillin binding protein. And the carbapenem is also resistant to beta-lactamase and it is also binding to PBP or penicillin binding protein. There may be the glycopeptides which are also inhibiting the cell wall biosynthesis because they will block the alanyl alanine cross-linkage and they include the vancomycin, the balimycin and the chloroeromycin, etc. Similarly, there may be the phosphomycin which is an advanced antibiotic which is inhibiting a protein component, the MARA. It is inhibiting the cell wall biosynthesis by inhibiting MARA. And it also includes the polymyxin. Now this polymyxin as such is not inhibiting the cell wall, but it is inhibiting the LPS. And that's why this LPS or lipopolysaccharide, because it is present in gram-negative bacteria, it can be effective against gram-negative bacteria by destabilizing the outer membrane or by destabilizing the different ionic channels. There may be another class of antibiotics which is commonly called the nucleic acid inhibitor like the rifampicin or rifamycin and the quinolone. And they are basically blocking the nucleic acid biosynthesis by blocking the different enzymes like RNA polymerase, like the topoisomerase, etc. There may be also the protein synthesis inhibitor. Tetracycline is blocking the 30S ribosomal subunit and thereby inhibiting protein synthesis. <laughs> The other ways include the classification according to the spectrum. That means some antibiotics may be narrow spectrum. They are inhibiting small group of microorganism. In case of gram positive organism, it is inhibited by amino glycosides like streptomycin, dihydrostreptomycin and the first generation of cephalosporin. They can inhibit gram positive microorganism only, only a small group. But in case of broad spectrum, they are able to inhibit the growth of both gram positive as well as gram negative one like amikacin, neomycin. So they are able to inhibit the growth of both gram positive as well as gram negative. So they will be more effective for antibiotic of resistant bacteria. Of course they bacteria. will be most effective, more effective and they have much lesser toxicity as well. Right. right. Then classification according to their nature or source. Natural penicillin or natural antibiotic. They are produced by the microorganism itself. Like penicillin G, penicillin V, they are produced by the penicillium, benzyl penicillin as well. But they have some of the problems because they may be narrow spectrum as well and they can be the target for the penicillinase enzyme or beta-lactamase which is able to destroy the beta-lactam ring and from penicillin, penicillioic acid is getting produced. So, we have to have some semi-synthetic as well as synthetic antibiotic. In case of semi-synthetic antibiotic, the chemically modified natural compounds are there like ampicillin and we can have synthetic that is totally synthesized by the laboratory like quinolone, like norfloxacin, etc. They have lesser toxicity and higher effectivity and they were not yet exposed to the microorganism. There are some other spectrum including the extended spectrum like ureodopenicillin that is produced by the Pseudomonas originosa as well as co-drugs are there where two drugs are combined like ampicillin or amoxicillin along with the beta-lactamase inhibitor clavulinate. Sir, there is another classification according to different chemical structure. <laughs> Like beta-lactam antibiotic including penicillin, carbapenem, monobactam. In case of monobactam, one single ring is present. Next, we can have polypeptide type of antibiotic like vancomycin, glycopolypeptide is their large ring. 
Next one, lipopolypeptide or lipopeptide. It is polymyxin cell membrane inhibitor synthesized by Bacillus polymyxa. Apart from which, macrolide where large lactone ring is present like erythromycin as well as aminoglycosides like tetracycline. So that is the aspect based on differential chemical structure. Sir, can you tell us about the assessment, bioassay, by which antibiotic can be quantified? Yeah, absolutely. The stage is now set to discuss the different experiments which will explain the antibiotic bioassay. And antibiotic bioassay can be carried out by two different methods. One is the solid method, another one is the liquid method. And in the solid method, we have the Kirby bauer test where we also call it disc diffusion test and we also have the agar cup method. <laughs> This experiment, antibiotic sensitivity assay by disc diffusion, the main purpose is to understand how the antibiotic is diffusing along the solid medium and thereby it is preventing the growth of bacterial organism. And there may be different requirements, so I shall be discussing the requirements, the procedure, the observation and also the results and precautions. The requirements include the nutrient broth in 20 ml culture tube, a pore plate with different bacterial colonies, an inoculating loop, Muller Hinton agar powder. It can either be manufactured or it can also be prepared taking the different composition. It will also include the petri plate, the autoclave, a ruler, antibiotic discs belonging to different different antibiotics like streptomycin, ampicillin, tetracycline, etc. The forceps and the spreader, 18 to 24 hour old culture of bacteria, laminar hood, spirit lamp, incubator with shaker. The inoculum is prepared by diluting the sample to be tested, usually 10 to the power minus 3 or minus 4 dilution is taken. A pore plate culture is prepared with the requisite sample. It is incubated overnight at 37 degree centigrade in an incubator. The desired organism is touched with the nucleating needle and suspended in 2 ml nutrient bath in a culture tube which is sterilized. The suspension is also incubated in a shaker at 37 degree centigrade overnight. The Muller Hinton agar is prepared following the composition of beef infusion 300 gram, cas amino acid 17.5 gram, starch 1.5 gram, agar 17 gram and distilled water 1 liter. After preparing the media, they are actually taken in flask and autoclaved at 15 pounds PSI pressure, that is at 121.6 degree centigrade. They are dispensed in sterile petri plate and solidified. The appropriate antimicrobial discs are placed on the agar using a forceps as shown here. And the disc should be placed closer than 24 millimeter. That means ideally not more than six discs should be placed in a particular petri plate. And then the petri plates are incubated at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours. Coming to the observation, the disc will produce a specific inhibition zone. And this inhibition zone normally is measured with a scale. Normally, the control is always considered to be the standard disc where no antibiotic is used so there will be no inhibition zone and depending upon the results obtained that is depending upon the length of the inhibition zone a table is prepared which will include the name of the antibiotic the amount present in each disc and the inhibition zone and thereby we can actually understand which particular antibiotic is most effective in disc diffusion method or rather which antibiotic is to be given to a particular patient in case of antibiotic resistance. On the basis of the inhibition zone, bacteria can be classified as susceptible 
intermediate and resistant following the famous clinical and laboratory standard institute method or CLSI method. But there are certain precautions of this particular tests or experiment. Number one, the antibiotic disc should be placed tightly on the petri plate. All the glass goods and the media used should be properly autoclaved so there is no contamination. At a time, one disc should be placed and there should be adequate area in between the plate so that the areas will not overlap. The incubation temperature should be 37 degree centigrade which is ideal for bacteria. The pH of the media should be ideal for the bacteria so that the ideal growth condition is provided. And last but not the least, the inoculum should be adequate so that the growth of the bacteria is heavy enough to understand the inhibition zone. Now there is another method which will be discussed by my colleague Shudeshna. Yes sir. Another method includes agar couplet method. In case of some antibiotic, old antibiotic like streptomycin, penicillin, the disc diffusion method does not work good. For that particular reason, we have to perform the agar couplet method. So that is the principle. Then we have to have the idea about the requirements for that particular process. We have to have the nutrient broth, nutrient, stab, sterile petri dishes, micropipette, cork borer, autoclave, laminar hood, sterile water, as well as gram positive and gram negative bacteria. We have to have antibiotic capsules like ampicillin, like streptomycin, penicillin, then inoculation loop spreader, then spirit lamps. First, the target organism may be gram positive or gram negative will be inoculated within the nutrient broth and will be kept at 37 degree centigrade for 24 hours. The nutrient stabs will be prepared, solid stabs and will be autoclaved at 15 pound per square inch pressure. Next, that particular stab will be liquefied and be poured inside the petri dishes and they will be allowed to solidify. Next, after solidification with a spreader, 1 ml of microorganism will be spreaded over the solid agar plate and after that the cork borer will be taken. That particular cork borer will be surface sterilized by alcohol dipping and igniting in the fire right by the spirit lamp. Next with the cork border at four corners of the plate the scoops or wells will be made and then the scoops will be taken out by the cork border. Next master stock of antibiotic S will be prepared with sterile distilled water in culture tube. Then from that S is by 2 is by 4 different concentration of the antibiotic will again be made with the help of sterile water in different culture tubes. And after that with 1 ml pipette 0.2 ml of antibiotic will be disposed inside different wells okay and they will be kept in the incubator in the upright manner for overnight observation. Now the diameter of the cork borer is 2.5 millimeter. Next observation actually help us to know the zone, clear zone of inhibition. Clear zone of inhibition means that is actually provided by the antibiotic effectiveness and help us to know the minimum inhibitory concentration. <laughs> after 24 hours zone of inhibition measuring by scale in millimeter help us to tabulate in such a manner with respect to name of antibiotic amount of antibiotic present in gram in each well actually the concentration will be considered here and then inhibition zone size in millimeter sometimes with respect to the amount and inhibition zone a straight line curve can also be determined so 
from these observations, the inference can be drawn with respect to the effectiveness of a specific antibiotic and minimum inhibitory concentration against specific microorganism. But sir, like your method, there are some precautions to be taken. Everything, all steps will be done aseptically under laminar hood, okay? And not only that, when the cork border will be surface sterilized by dipping in alcohol, then in fire, fire must be caught. So we have to keep in mind, we have to do it carefully. And in a single plate, more than four wells are not recommended to do. And in a single plate, single antibiotic and single specific microorganism is actually giving you the best result. So all of these precautions we have to adopt for this method because this is a very old method and only applicable for penicillin, uh, streptomycin, etc. So in this particular lecture, what we have discussed, we have started with the definition of antibiotic, we have discussed the history of antibiotic development. We have gone into the different aspects of classifying antibiotic. And most importantly, we have discussed the two different experiments of antibiotic sensitivity assay. That is by disk diffusion method or Carbe-Bauer test and also the agar couplet method. And that will determine which particular antibiotic is effective against which particular organism. Thank you. Thank you.